Coming up on Small Town Big Deal. Groundhog Day Madness. Everything you ever wanted to know on the life, the legend, and the legacy of Puxatawney Phil. Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania, and if you know oh. your Punxsutawney trivia, you know what we're here for. Yeah, baby, it's Groundhog Day. Did you just say, yeah, baby? Yeah. Okay, I think he's really getting into it. We're going to tell you things that you never knew about Groundhog Day. Including the party that happens before Phil makes his prediction. Yeah. Okay. Phil, of course, is Punxsutawney Phil, the seer of seers, the prognosticator of prognosticators, and without question, the most famous rodent this side of Mickey Mouse. Since 1886, the Phil faithful have congregated every February 2nd in the small western Pennsylvania town of Punxsutawney. Population, about 6,000. It is here in the wee hours of the night that thousands traipse out into the middle of the forest in the dead of winter to witness a giant ground squirrel make a weather prediction. Groundhog. Oh, I'm so in. Have you guys gone to sleep tonight? No, no, no. we have class. We have morning. class at 9 a.m. and we're in six it. hours going strong. Why not wake up at 2 a.m., make the drive up here, and just enjoy the festivities of Groundhog Day? <laughs> How many years have you been coming? This is my first year. No way, you have to have like this into it. I'm from Alaska, and we all dress like this. <laughs> we're seeing the groundhog, we're the teachers, and we're skipping school. Here's Groundhog Day in a nutshell. When the sun comes up, if Phil comes out of his burrow and sees his shadow, we got six more weeks of winter. That's right, but if he comes out and he doesn't, that means spring is right around the corner. And according to the locals, Phil is never wrong. <laughs> I'm just curious, how accurate is Phil in his predictions? I think 90% of the time he's been pretty accurate. Always. I mean, I, he's, oh, not, he's we never went from been 90% wrong. 90% to 100%. <laughs> he is never wrong. Hey, I'm the only person I know who's right 100% of the time. Nobody's right 100% of the time, even Jan. Groundhog Day's roots can be traced all the way back to the 4th century and an early Christian holiday called Candemus Day. And references to it can also be found in a centuries-old Scottish poem, which says, if Candlemas Day is bright and clear, there'll be two winters in the year. See what you can learn here on Small Town Big Deal? I love this stuff. So Phil, <laughs> are there gonna be six more weeks of winter? Back here in Pennsylvania, Phil makes his prediction a couple of miles out of town in a wooden clearing called Gobbler's Knob. Many of his fans have been making the pilgrimage for years. Yeah, I'm into it. I'm hardcore, you know. 24 years of waking up at 1.30 in the morning to go see Phil on February 2nd. 24 so, years in a row. 24 years in a row. John Lovitz and Judy Seltzer are the ultimate Phil fanatics. So what do you love about it? It's just this fun midwinter party out in the middle of nowhere with 20 to 40,000 of your closest friends. <laughs> uh, most people don't celebrate winter, they dread it. And to see people come out and enjoy it like this, it's actually a lot of fun. And that fun goes on all night as the crowd is treated to non-stop bands, cheerleaders, and a huge fireworks show just before sunrise. Wow. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. That is some show. Uh, and that has got to be one of the best fireworks on I have ever seen. I've been watching Phil make his prediction on the news for years. But who knew that all of this went on all night long before he even comes out of his burrow. I guess that makes him Punk Satani's premier party animal. I'm voting for six more weeks of winter. 
But it's not just the overnight festivities. The whole town gets its groundhog on for the massive influx of visitors who come from far and wide. So Destiny, what is the farthest that people come to for this event? There have been people that have come all the way from Australia. Ooh, um, that's pretty far. <laughs> they went <laughs> China, Japan, um, Ireland, Germany, England. I mean, people just come from all cool. over different countries. Gosh, it's an international event. It is an international event, yeah. Gobbler's, Gobbler's on. on. And there's more groundhog merchandise than you could shake a stick at. Here are gloves for you. Oh, now these. And My paws. Mm. Now, it doesn't get more Groundhog Day than that. The Weather Channel's Jen Carfagno has been covering the event for years and says it's a Category 5 good time. So, Jen, it's got to be kind of fun. This is not a disaster or anything. This is kind of a fun thing to be at. Oh, this is the event of the year. This is the event. Uh, look, everyone at the Weather Channel wants to be out in the hurricane with the driving wind, but this is better. This <laughs> is better. This is an event just to have fun about the weather. So, are you ready to test your knowledge on the movie Groundhog Day? Listen up. How many scenes from the movie Groundhog Day were filmed in Punxsutawney? Was it A, all of them, B, some of them, or C, none of them? The answer when we come right back. You're watching Small Town Big Deal. Welcome back to Small Town Big Deal from Puxatawney, Pennsylvania. Okay, are you ready for the answers to our Groundhog Day movie quiz? How many scenes were actually filmed right here in Puxatawney? The answer, none. None. Zip. Zero. No, the whole thing was shot in Woodstock, Illinois, right next to star Bill Murray's hometown. The way they talked him into it was to film it in his hometown. And people come here and they're like shocked because they get here to this, this quaint little town square and they're like, well, where's Gobbler's Knob at? It's like three miles that way. They're like, well, no, in the movie, he like walks from the diner to the town square. And I'm like, yeah, a lot of things happen in movies don't happen in real life. <laughs> in fact, before the 1993 movie came out, things up at Gobbler's Knob were pretty low key. And there was probably two, 300 people and a bonfire. And you'd, you'd that's go- That's all it was that's back all then. It, there was none of this. You know, people would show up here and party like it was a tailgate. Veteran TV weatherman Jim Burton has covered the event for more than 20 years. He says the movie changed the whole nature of the celebration. That movie turned it into more or less a family event and they've, they've made sure that uh, there's no rowdy behavior and they've made, made this more like an amphitheater for people to actually come down and really enjoy it. And then the very year after the movie came out, it went from like 300 people to like 30,000 overnight. Wow. And it flooded across the street into the field. They ended up having to redo the area up there at Gobbler's Knob because the stage was too close to the road and with crowds of 20, 30, 40,000, they had to like move it way back. Did you like to run the movie in the local movie houses here or something? It is. It runs all day long, all weekend long for free. Anybody can come and watch it. Um, so yeah. it runs over and That's over. That's right. And isn't, that, isn't that ironic? Yeah, <laughs> yes it does. Yeah. <laughs> That's only fitting that it I'm does. Sorry, I couldn't resist. <laughs> yeah. But the one constant over the years? Punxsutawney Phil's human handlers. The 15 civic leaders in the top hats and tuxes known as the inner circle. And what does that mean? Yeah, sort of like the board of directors of the Groundhog Club. Bill Dealey is the club's president and for 30 years he has been Phil's right hand man taking him to public events, schools, and occasionally even home. He's got his own groundhog mobile, the Phil Mobile. There he goes. See you guys later on. What does Phil like to eat? He's a vegetarian, and then he's going to eat just about anything that grows in your garden. That's just a little too healthy. Phil, don't you have any bad eating habits? Gets in here a bag of potato chips, he'll eat those, you know what I'm saying? He likes oh, the salt and you know. Yeah. After my own heart, that uh, Phil. We're the same way. A little uh, vanilla ice cream, you know, he'll, oh, he'll, eat, he'll eat the vanilla ice cream, whatever. I mean, he, he will eat a little bit of junk food like the, you know, like the real American does. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. He's an American He's groundhog. American. But don't think for a minute that Phil is getting spoiled. We live in the best country in the world, United States of America, okay? Are you required to get a physical every year? We have, well, physically, we have We're not required, no. no, but Phil is. Phil is governed and licensed by the Department of Agriculture and required to go to a doctor and to have a vet check him out and give him a physical every year. Huh? So is he in good health? He's in good health. Yeah, there he is. Where? Where? Right there. Under that rock. Straight down. <gasps> oh, he's sleeping. On the 364 other days of the year that are not Groundhog Day, 
Phil lives a pretty cushy life right downtown. Phil has it made. He lives yeah. in a climate controlled environment right here. They bring him granola bars and kale to eat. Uh, they bring action to him, I guess you could say, in terms yeah. of female companionship. Phil's got a great life. But he's a celebrity. He is a very big celebrity. <laughs> he visits elementary schools all across Pennsylvania and nursing homes and, you know, he just, he's out and about. He met Ronald Reagan. He's been on the Oprah Winfrey show. Oh, sure. wow. Oh, yeah. Good Morning America. All right. But sometimes the perks of stardom can lead to bad behavior. A dirty secret about Phil is he's not hospitable. He's, he's not the friendliest. Mm. He's photogenic. He, he loves taking pictures. He's a real ham, but he's also a real jerk. So he's a little cranky. <laughs> a little bit cranky. Yeah. What do you think is the um, most unknown fact about Phil or the event? The most unknown fact about the groundhog probably is he only has four teeth. As a dentist, I know that. <laughs> you can go out of business there by only That's having 4D. Right. Well, they grow all the time. So, Wait, so those, the two on top and the two on bottom that we see, that's it? That's it. Yeah, when he smiles, you're getting the full dentition. That's, that's yeah. all there is. Now, I that is an interesting piece that of information. A, that is a good fact. Well, Punxsutawney's Groundhog Day is the granddaddy of them all. There are a whole bunch of other communities across America that have followed in Phil's tiny footsteps. There's Jimmy the Groundhog in Sun Prairie, Wisconsin, and Staten Island Chuck in New York. Or how about Smith Lake Jake in Alabama? And of course, General Beauregard Lee in Georgia. Oh, here they come. Look at all the top hats. Oh, I see them. When we come back, the moment we've all been waiting for, Phil's big prediction. But first, what other names do groundhogs go by? Is it A, Whistle pig, B, woodchuck, or C, land beaver? The answer right after this break. You're watching Small Town Big Deal. Welcome back to Small Town Big Deal. We are in Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania. Oh, the sun is about to come up. That's right, and it's Groundhog Day. But first, the answer to our Groundhog Day quiz. What other names does a groundhog go by? Is it whistle pig, woodchuck, or land beaver? Well, the answer, all three of them. Yeah! Well, I'll admit it's been a long time since I pulled an all-nighter, but with the sun about to come up and the temperature in the low 20s, there's only one thing left to do. So we know now what to do before the sun comes up in Punxsutawney. Dance. Then dance some more. And some more. Oh, and then don't forget to dance. Hello, everybody. There were plenty of celebrities in attendance. Miss Pennsylvania was there, this year's Groundhog King and Queen, and even one young couple who used the occasion to put a ring on it. But for many in the crowd, making the pilgrimage to Puxatawney fulfills a lifelong ambition. Have you guys been here before? No, it's our first time. How long have you been coming? This is my first time. First time? And you're in the front row? I'm guessing this is not your first time. No, it's not. Sixth year. Sixth oh. year. Okay, why do you keep coming back? Because it's a blast. It's fun. You meet people from all over the world. There's no doubt that Phil's forecasting prowess is what put Puxatawney on the map. But this self-proclaimed weather capital of the world has built on its reputation by constructing the Punxsutawney Weather Discovery Center, a hands-on learning institution dedicated to all things meteorological. I made a tornado. Wow. Look at it. <laughs> And as part of the week's festivities, they inducted into the Meteorologist Hall of Fame the director of the National Weather Service, Dr. Louis Uccellini. To be recognized for your accomplishments while you're actually having fun doing your job is, uh, is a special honor. So I really enjoy being here. Well, what's your prediction? Do you think Phil's going to get it right? I was told by the handlers here that he always gets it right. <laughs> yeah, we heard the same thing, 100%. I think they're biased. So, think they're biased. so <laughs> if it's wrong, it's because the handlers did not interpret it correctly. You're good. Oh, say, can you see? 
The dawn's early light was just around the corner when the 15 members of the inner circle made its annual trek up to Gobbler's Knob. Oh, here they come. Look at all the top hats. Oh, I see them. Oh, my gosh. For the tens of thousands who braved the elements to be here, the moment of truth had arrived. Okay, Dan, what are you hoping for? I like winter. I, I want spring. Are you ready for six more weeks of winter? Where perchance is, is spring just around the corner. Oh, yeah. One, two, three. A few knocks on Phil's tree stump door. <laughs> and after a few seconds of coaxing the rascally rodent. Ladies and gentlemen, punks the Tony Phil. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hi, Phil. Yeah. What do you think? Phil is gently placed upon his stump, and when he's ready, reveals his prediction in perfect groundhog ease to the president of the inner circle. Folks, you cannot make this stuff up. Punxsutawney Phil, the seer of seers, prognosticator of all prognosticator, was awakened from his burrow to the cheers of his thousands of faithful followers. And reading from a parchment scroll, Phil's verdict is shared with the world. Perchance this winter has come to an end. Yeah! It's springtime. Oh yeah, I got it right. You got it right. Early spring, take your jackets off. You're not going to need them. Today he said early spring. Right. How many times has he predicted an early spring? In the 130 years they've been doing this, only this is the 18th time he's wow. predicted an early spring. That's it? That's it. Okay, so the big question is, what do you think of his prediction? Oh, it's wonderful. Oh, wonderful. Me too, Jan, not so much. Yeah. yeah. I've had my fill. I've had my fill Oh, I like that. Bobby, are you happy with Phil's prediction? I'm excited about the prediction. Me too. Jan's not. Okay, why so excited? Because I got snowed in on vacation last week with 42 inches of snow. 42? In, in West Virginia. That's so. almost as tall as you. I know. <laughs> After Phil's big moment in the sun, many in the crowd head for home while some go straight to work. But for the real Phil faithful, it's get in line for a picture with the pride of Punxsutawney. What would you say to someone to convince them they should come and experience this? It's not just about Groundhog Day. When you come to small to medium town Pennsylvania, the people embrace you. It's a good time and it's a family thing. You can, you can make an event or a weekend out of it and the people here embrace it. enjoyed this episode of Small Town Big Deal. Okay, I know I did. I had so much fun Is here. this a party or what? Unbelievable. <laughs> I didn't expect this. What was the most surprising thing for you? Uh, fireworks at 6 a.m. I don't think I ever saw that before. So you're ready for Oh spring. yeah, spring baby. Yeah, and the beach. I win the prediction. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> I'm Rodney Miller. And I'm Jan Carl. Join us again next week when once again we celebrate the great stories from across America. Hey Phil, I was hoping for winter, but Rodney's really happy. All right, so, okay, next year, winter for me. Deal. Don't count. Are there gonna be six more weeks of winter? Hey, you're never right, Phil. Welcome to the Small Town Big Deal Weathercast. I'm Jan Carl. And I'm Rodney Miller, and I'm predicting summer. Oh, I'm predicting six more weeks of winter. So, I hope she's bundle warm. up. Take your clothes and throw them away. It's gonna be warm. <laughs> you're and gonna say warm. take your clothes off. <laughs> we have an executive director right now, and we all pretty much snap too when she tells us. <laughs> yeah, you you might want to you might want to try that snap too part. You know, is what I'm yeah, thinking. Yeah, I'm not yeah. too good at that. Yeah.